On this week's episode of an Echo of Glory, the boys are back in pre-season training. We'll have a look at the Euros, a Copper America, talk about Archie Gray, just a little bit of a catch-up of where we are. Welcome back to an Echo of Glory. We're in pre-season training here at Launchport Studios. Joining me, the two Jake, Jake Robson. Hello. Hello, Jake Sanders. Hello. Hello, you okay? Hey, what training have you been doing? Well, played a bit of cricket. Yeah. Yeah, three times this summer. And? Uh, taking a few wickets, yeah. Ah, yeah. A few poles? A few poles, no runs. <laughs> Not much of a batsman, me. No. <laughs> no. Um, what have you been up to? Watching the Euros. Yeah. Euros we'll is good. We're going to talk about that. Um, just got back from Glastonbury. Survived. Okay. Uh, watched a bit of cricket. Um, I feel like I've done loads, but I can't remember any of it. <laughs> like Glastonbury. I was going to say, yeah. Um, and we've got Mr. Mr. Twitter exclusive himself. Mr. England exclusive. <laughs> Mr. England exclusive. Jake, since we finished the season, Jake is now the go-to man for team news on England on Twitter, but everyone hates you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get it quite right, because Saka, Trippier, wrong way around. I don't think anyone, I don't but even think Saka and Trippier For people that, that don't know, Jake put up, Jake Sanders put up a tweet. He got the England team early. And, and hey, it turned out to be right. And they're absolutely asking me who my source is. <laughs> Who's your source? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, it was Gareth Southgate was at your wedding, was he? Okay, I see. <laughs> best man. Best man. Do you know, I once went to uh, Ray Stubbs' wedding and the best men were uh, Mark Lawrence and Alan Hansen. And it was wonderful. It was like uh, final score from <laughs> 1995. And Bobby George was there. Bobby George. What a li- I sometimes wonder whether I dreamt this, uh, but it, it, ge- it genuine, nah, genuinely happened. Before we go into... Uh, Spurs stuff and Euro stuff. Uh, we are back for one week only for now. We've been doing the look backs um, on, on previous seasons in this great club's history. I wasn't say great seasons, but some of them yeah. were not great. Uh, we've done, what have we done? We've done 1991, 94, 95, the Klinsman, Klinsman. season. 19- Six, 16, 17. Yeah, 16, 17. I was going to go I mean, he was going to go, oh, go chronologically. Right, chronologically, but you know, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, 90, right 98, around. 99, 1990, Last week was 16, 17. And next week... We did Champions League final yeah, season. Yeah, so next week we've got the Champions League final season, oh. 18, 19. And we've also got the 09, 10. 09, 10. Season when we first... I feel, like, we, I feel like we've got another one, but I missed it. But is that it? That's yeah. it. That's it. That's so, it. So uh, we are sort of back for one week only, but it's, this is going to be a little bit of where are we at. We're basically, just quickly, we're basically saying that six seasons have been remotely right. significant in the last three decades. Not necessarily good, significant. <laughs> Nothing else has happened in tw- in, in those other 24 well, no, seasons. They were, they were the, I'd say they were Waste the top the six. We, we could have recorded... We could, we could combine recorded... those 25 seasons into half an hour. In a half an hour. Day, all the best bits. <laughs> That's next week. But we should, we should also say that uh, they're all on YouTube and on um, where you get your podcasts. Go yeah. back and listen to them. They are genuinely really they're, interesting. I think they're we really good. We could have spent all summer going through Twitter and talking about transfer rumours. Boring. Well, like some pods might do. But we, but don't, we don't do need that because we've got Jake to... Break all the news. Break all the exclusives. Yeah, he told us that Archie Gray was signing, even though we all knew that, on the WhatsApp group. But he knew... Makes Good Eddie, guy to have he? around, isn't he? Eddie Gray, is it? <laughs> another, another best man? I have got. I actually met Eddie Gray. I've got his phone Mil- number Leeds, in my phone randomly. Millwall Leeds game a few years ago. I had a chat with Eddie Gray. Nice. nice. fight with him at a Millwall Leeds game yeah, in the no car fight. park. Come on, Eddie. I think Outside. he thought I was covering Leeds, so we were fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Euro 2024. Divided opinion. Overall thoughts on the tournament, Jake Robson. Uh, the tournament as a whole, um, it started really well. I feel like it's petered out a little bit, or mm. certainly the quality of matches. But the thing yeah. that I, the thing that sticks with me the most that I think people need to realise, and they will realise, is that it feels like the lesser teams played the good football, yeah. but they've all gone home. <laughs> Spain aside, maybe. France have been hopeless. Right. France have scored three goals at this tournament. Yeah. Uh, Two, uh, two own goals two and own a penalty. Goals, yeah, and a penalty. So they haven't scored yeah. from open play. Holland haven't been very good. But to be fair, I don't think Holland are that good the anyway. The Netherlands, please. Sorry, the Netherlands. I wouldn't have tipped the Netherlands to be that good and they haven't, they've been fine. Mm. They're probably doing about as well as they could have done. And England obviously haven't been that great. But look who's in the, um, the semi-finals. Basically, three of, the, three of the teams that haven't played the best football are there. So what does that tell you? Yeah. It's not about necessarily how you play. It's about getting the results. I think that the whole thing about the good... I agree with you. The co- quality or excitement has definitely petered out. 
But I think the teams we might like Georgia and those teams that yeah. excited everyone, Turkey. but they kind of play on the break. So you absolutely, can't, you, that's the kind of exciting football, and that also their tactic is in a way to nullify and then attack. So in a way, they're kind of boring teams, but they just play on the break. And also, I think with England, and maybe apart from the Swiss, the Switzerland game, we came up against teams that yeah. just wanted to sit back. Okay, yeah. we didn't do very well at breaking them down, but. We haven't come up against a team that wants to play and that will actually give us a chance no. to try and pick them off. Mr. Yet. England, Mr. England, what do you think? <laughs> what got? about England or the tournament? Both. And, what's the, and what's the team news for tomorrow? Uh, for <laughs> Wednesday? It's, it's, too, it's too early. Too early. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've, it's been mixed. It's Have been, you enjoyed it? I, I, I've, enjoy, I've even enjoyed some of the nil-nil draws. I, I, I really enjoyed Portugal, Slovenia. I've, I've enjoyed the, the less. I've enjoyed the lesser teams. I really have. The the. As, as, you know, France is and generally we've been quite poor and disappointed with Italy, probably the, one of the worst Italy sides I can remember seeing yeah, at a tournament. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's been a bit weird. It's been mixed. As, as Jake said, it started off really well. The first sort of yeah. six or seven games are really fun. And then I don't know. It, I, I don't really know. I, I, it's been strange. Does it feel? It feels like, although we get to the business end now, it does feel like it's dragged on a little bit. And I it don't feels know, like I, it's gone on for a while. I think it's because the ga the the games in the last couple of rounds <laughs> there haven't been like you know loads of really good games. Well, three of the quarter, five, three of the four quarters went to penalties. There you go. I've never really liked it since since they made it the last sixteen at the Euros. I just feel like it feels too many. I know they have the same at the World Cup. It just feels too many knockout games. Mm, yeah. And I know people could argue that you know. If you go to those quarters, it's only seven knockouts games, which is really, really... I don't know. It just felt like there was loads and loads and loads of knockouts. It feels like... the How long ago did the groups feel like? Uh, about six weeks ago, I think they finished. Right. <laughs> the one thing it has done, I think, this time, compared certainly to when it started in 2016, is that um, a lot of the, the third-place teams that went through have been, have been better... They played better football at this tournament than well, when Well, they got it, when close, first... didn't they? Slovenia, yeah. Slovakia... Yeah. Or Slovenia finished... Did they finish second in the end? What did they end up... Deciding it on uh, Slovenia, Denmark, but, but they've, they've yeah. all done quite well. Yeah. Georgia gave Spain a really good game. Yeah. Slovakia, where well, you know one overhead kick away it, from it, beating us. It feels us. like it's been. It feels like the bottom has been higher up than it has been in previous years, but the top hasn't been as high as it. Yeah, Do you I see think, what I mean. I think the level is definitely closing. Yeah, um, but I also think that the 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 top nations in international football have been declining for a while, yeah. apart from Argentina. Look at Brazil at the moment. Brazil Poor. Brazil have not been great. Yeah. Italy, I know they've won the Euros, but have gone for a bizarre period in the last yeah. few years. Germany, quite poor. We've actually been one of the most consistent. Solid, Belgium, yeah. Yeah. how disappointing poor. were Belgium? France. Yeah. And just lastly, before we move on, the, the narrative after the Denmark game was exactly the same as the narrative after the Scotland game in yeah. the last Euros. USA game. At USA the World Cup. game. We've had it loads. And no, we've but, had it no loads. but what I can't understand is everyone goes mental at how we played against Denmark. And it was bad, but it was like everyone forgot this is exactly what happened last time. Mm. And we ended up in a final and a semi final. You know. I think what shocks me, knowing how starved we are of success of, of England fans, is especially at this stage in the tournament, how bothered fans are about how we play. Yeah. I, I find it staggering. We should and, just want to get over the but line. I, yeah. I understand that, you know, the tactics and, you know, we should be better and we've got such a good squad, but who cares at this stage? This Genuinely, who yeah, cares? I think, I think that's now just turned. People I think were, like, people whinging have gone, oh. after, like, the Slovakia game. Like, who cares? But, well, we clearly, clearly France don't care how they play. And Italy never cared about looking good when they won tournaments. They just wanted to get across people the line. People forget how poor Italy were until the quarters or semis in 06. Yeah. If we win this tournament, no one will care about no. that nil-nil draw against Slovenia. You know what's going to happen if we do win this tournament? It'll all be... Oh, it's going to be no, Arsenal. There's no, yeah, there's no Spurs players in it. Of course we won it. <laughs> but weren't Hopefully they, weren't we, they, we signed as Tony a, in time. As, five, <laughs> as, a, as a group of penalties, they were the best five penalties oh, you could ever brilliant. see. And it, it, that's the one thing that worries me. If we go to penalties again, how do you pull that out? The how do you replicate another five penalties like that? This is wrong to say, but when Kane came off, I was like, felt a little bit relieved because I just I, don't I, want him I, to miss. I just I just don't need. That. He just doesn't need that. <laughs> he's he not playing. He's that. not fit, is he? He's not. Fit. I just it just I was like the way the way the tournament's been going for him. I thought he'll miss. Yeah, yeah. And I just especially after France. Yeah. And yeah. I knew we had really good takers. So that another exclusive. Was, <laughs> no, but as in, like, everyone knew, like, every, you know, yeah, they all could... said it. We had, like, probably the five best takers in the Premier League or, mm. or whatever besides Bellingham. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Spurs players at the Euros, Vicario didn't didn't get a minute. Uh, Hoiberg did okay. He was brilliant against us. Play well, did play well against us. Um, Dragusin. Brilliant. Uh, been brilliant. That performance <clears> against... 
uh, the knockout game. None of the first game. Was it not the first Ukraine. game? Ukraine. Ukraine. Amazing. Excellent. Yeah. As a defender, like, I think he was on the ball a lot for Spurs, and I was a little bit like, oh, can he, he play? He looked comfortable, didn't he? But Romania, he's just a defender, in all honesty. Uh, they do a lot of defending, and his defending was, was brilliant. That's the, that's uh, we the way, don't that's defend. That's the way they that's play. That's where we go wrong. That's the way they play, mate. We yeah. actually don't defend. Yeah. <laughs> and there's all this talk of... well, And then there's Van der Ven, who's sort of come on and done a job, did very well against Turkey. Made a uh, massive Turkey off, in off the, off the line. line. Yeah. Yeah, interest, I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, it's, how he gets on on uh, Wednesday. He won't start. He's just so classy. Yeah, but when he comes on. He'll definitely come on. He's brilliant. Yeah. He's come on for like a decent m- amount of time, which says a lot just, considering he's a defender. You just yeah. don't want him to have a good game. You don't want him, you don't, well, do you? You can have a good game when we're three up. That's what I mean. As if we're scoring yeah. three goals. We should, we should want Holland, Spurs players, really, shouldn't we? What you do you mean? mean? We want Spurs players to succeed. We've got England. no Spurs players in the United <laughs> team. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I'm tell, obviously that, tell, tell, tell that to your bosses. <laughs> what a, yeah, what's the breaking Netherlands team need, mate? <laughs> what, um, do we want a three at the back? Everyone, oh, let's get Romero, Dragosun, and Van no, Ven in the no. team. I think about England. People get a bit yeah. overexcited, and you know what we're going to do with Dragosun. Dragosun will nah, get his yeah. chance. We've yeah. got a lot of you, you know, games in Europe, yeah. and Van der Ven, you know, and Romero didn't play nowhere near every game last season. He will get his chance. We don't need to change the formation around for essentially a squad player at the moment. Yeah. That's what he is. Yeah, agreed. You've got to think, and I'm, I will I will never forget what one of our guests, whose name escapes me, mm-hmm. said when he came on last year about... Oh, it was Charlie Equishare. He said, for fans think when you get into the Europa League, yeah, you just make 11 changes and we'll see all these young players getting yeah. played. And he said, actually, that's not going to happen. But you've got to think that Dragosin is going to get a lot more minutes this season. He'd be one that you can just do a straight swap. Yeah. Whether we see the likes of Dorrington, Divine, all these kind of guys. I don't think we'll go that deep. No, that's but what I mean. The, but I think Dragosin someone like Dragosin, 100%, that, 100%. But also Romero will get injured suspended. Van der Veen will get injured. <laughs> Romero will disappear for two weeks before um, we got the first break. three in, the three international breaks, September, October, November, are always quite tricky well, when you play in South America. Well, let's talk about South America. Nice segue. <laughs> um, these bags under my eyes are because I've been working on the Euros and the Copa Did Johnny tell you he's been so busy? <laughs> uh, we didn't talk you know about you say? going. You did the... If the if the voice is croaky, the puckets must be bulky. Is that right? Yeah, it's I, not. I, I don't know why I've woken up with this this morning. You've been. I'm busy. You've been hobnobbing around the <laughs> hobnobbing. You're in. Where were you? Horsham around or something? The ballot boxes. Yeah, ballot boxes. Um, Fairham. Okay. Yeah. That Tory Labour Dib Dib Dems. I thought we were talking about South America. They were well, all hang on. So what, this, this is a segue. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I worked on the election night. Okay, well, yeah. Boring. What of it? Yeah. Um, Copa America, we've got Lo Celso, Romero, Benton Curl all into the semi final. Argentina will play Canada. Canada been good. Yeah. Argentina beat them 2 0 in the group stage. They'll beat them again. Who's uh, the other? Is it Uruguay? It's Columbia. Uruguay, Colombia. Colombia, 27 games unbeaten. They're a good really? team. Yeah. They're a good team. Um, yeah. Benton could. Johnny not tell you he's been working on the Copa America. <laughs> Wait, uh, Sanchez is Colombian, right? Yeah. He's been playing. Doesn't play for us anymore. <laughs> yeah, but. Scored a goal yeah. in the group stage. Um, I think of our former players. Yeah. He was ben- such a fan's favourite. Well, there's an argument to say we could should have kept him after the state of our defence when he left. Benton has been coming off the bench a lot in almost every game. Scored his penalty in, in the he shoot. scored it. Was it his first international goal he scored as well? No, he scored. Do you remember we signed him and he scored just after we signed him? Or maybe it was his second. Yeah. I couldn't believe he was not been starting though. Yeah. Maybe right. that says about his form. Yeah. Essentially. But they, they are unbeaten so he hasn't really changed up the midfield. Yeah, so Argentina, Canada, Uruguay, Colombia. My guess would be an Argentina, uh, Columbia, Colombia final. final. I think Colombia better than Uruguay. But Romero's been good. Uh, obviously he's been... You see all the clips going around. Exactly. He put... <laughs> He's just incredible for he, he could be he's probably, you know, top three in inter, international. Uh, Masterano defenders. picked him up. He also did one of he's those amazing. tackles. He did a tackle that he did against Chelsea that everyone cried about because he followed through, but you know, yeah, Copa America. That was yeah, not, that that that's was a good not. tackle in the Copa America, yeah. <laughs> was it on Caicedo? Yeah, I think it was. It was probably deserved then. Uh, um, <laughs> so That's a good segue. What's that? On Caicedo deserved. Why? Because when we're playing Chelsea. When are we playing Chelsea? You tell me. Don't know. <laughs> you want to talk about fixtures? I do want to talk about the fixtures. Everyone gets very excited about the fixtures, but as Ian Dark says, 
Uh, I was going to say friend of the show, but not, not, not yet. yet. Soon to be. If Portsmouth, he doesn't know it. If, if Portsmouth, he doesn't know it. If good old Uncle Ian. Uh, it's basically, you play everyone twice. You play 38 games. But a few things to note. We played Chelsea, by the way. Uh, that does... I, I, December. I, I hate that narrative because Which we saw... Oh, everyone plays each other. We <laughs> I, saw I'm what, being flippant. No, 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 of course. But people... like You saw what happened last year when you have a terrible fixture list. We, is, when know, you so, get right. tonked five weeks so, running. So my point was, last year we had some terrible runs, didn't we? It um, seems a little bit more scattered out this year. Yeah, we had that run, of course, Arsenal, Chelsea, Newcastle, Liverpool in a row and City just a little bit after that. We don't have that this year. Um, but we've got the Europa League to throw in. We may have a cut run. What we do have, which is a nightmare, is Arsenal at home first, which has not happened for years and I'm I'm at a wedding. That and day. so early. Two o'clock kickoff early. I don't mean like, no, 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 but like early kickoff as well. Early home September. That never, never get that sort of. Have why is it? No, have first? they released the times for the September ones yeah. already? Yeah, oh. I have. But why, that, why, why have the, any ideas why they've? Is it after that? Are the Europa League games? Teams are going to. Oh, that's next season. They're going to play at two o'clock on they a Sunday. They did it for the last one. Uh, the the north the derby um, at ours that was an early kickoff last season. No, but why are we at home first? That's not happened for ye like years. Does it matter? Yeah, it does, because I'm at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but your record last season was so bad. Yeah, it probably does me if I... What was your record last season? I, I went to about 10, lost about 7. Yeah, exactly. I think we only lost 6 at home as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we start the season at Leicester on a Monday night. Uh, a couple of home games. No, so Everton at home, go to Newcastle. Uh, and then a couple of home games, Arsenal-Brentford. So that Arsenal game, will that be after the Europa League? No, no, no. No? I think, I think the first Europa League game is... Is later. It's later. There's a lot of games. Might be the following week, no? Uh, that Leicester game will be quite interesting. Promoted yeah. team, Monday night, Madison, first game back there. I'm sure it'll be the pantomime villain. Do you want to play promoted teams early? No, I don't really. What were you saying, Johnny? When when the fixtures come out, which ones do you look at? You look at who were playing first, who were playing last, and when... Yeah, who were playing first, who were playing last, and what are our sort of Boxing Day, New Year's Day fixtures? And I don't we look at the Arsenal game, we just sort oh, of happen. No, I, 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 I just game. go first, Arsenal. Arsenal, yeah. Do you? yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of Europa League dates, uh, no, the first Europa League match date is 25th and 26th so of got September. Uni it's United, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, away to United. But also, United have got the same, so. Yeah. That shouldn't be as yeah. tricky. And we've got a better, I think we've got a better squad than them. We're always great at Old Trafford. <laughs> so those are the fixtures. Um, transfers, well... I mean, we made we made <laughs> one. To be fair, has anyone really made any? Not really. No, it's Euros, Euros. Euros gets in the way. They, they will. Gets in the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One person we won't be signing, unfortunately, is Michael Elise. Gone to Bayern. Oh, well, one thing I don't want to talk about: Ange at the Euros. Aren't you just loving Ange on the telly? He's I actually missed just all me? of it, but I saw some clips. Yeah, he's just a good guy, isn't he? He's brilliant. I just, I think yeah, from a Tottenham fan's perspective, to see Ange talking about football but not having to talk about Tottenham, just, you know, the same questions every week, he actually, like, you just want to listen. I mean, His personally, analysis was really impressive. Yeah, really, really good. good. My wife's laughing at me. She's like, oh, you just love anything he says. And I'm like, yeah, but what he says is really engaging well, as we a also pundit. Do love everything, anything, but we do also love everything he says. No, he was good. That thing he said about after the... Uh, last 16 game, Germany, Denmark, he's, where he said, you know, if one more person tells me that VAR is not re-refereeing game, you could see... <laughs> he's allowed to say it in this capacity. Yeah, oh, I, I, it, ma it was very... It made me think, if we get done over early in the season, <laughs> I wonder how he's going to react. But you know, Jake, you've stood in these presses. They're very reticent to say that in a Premier League capacity. He can get away with it. Right, he can get away with it. Working, yeah, he's but not, also, you know, he's been very good you know. at saying he just doesn't want to talk. He doesn't let the refs do their job. He, he he shut it down a lot more than other managers have. Some managers will go off on one, but he's actually been quite good about it. I think he doesn't want it as an excuse. But get him on the yeah. get him on the telly box. Yeah, yeah. He off he goes. Off uh, he goes. Um, Doesn't he tan well? In, yeah, he, kept, he was flying that, in from Greece to I, Germany. I mean, I, I would know that olive Greek olive skin. You know. <laughs> yeah. He did talk about set pieces, which bothered me because <laughs> we know you're not interested in those, mate. So stop pretending that you are. He talked about young players, didn't he? He talked about young players. I, I don't know if it was... Was he on for the Denmark game or if it was the game after they asked him about no, it? No, it was, was it not the Spain game when he was talking about your Yeah, but it after... I'm saying it was... Uh, yeah, if, so after the Den, after England-Denmark, was that after that or was it before? It was, it was in was relation... After. Basically, I, I can't remember when it was, but it was after an England game. They asked him about, as a look back at the, at the top, 
And, oh yeah, or maybe yeah. he was a pa- he was a pundit on one of the England games. But he was, he was, he and was. And, was and, and the likes, the likes of Palmer and uh, Gordon and whatever, uh, he, they either hadn't come on or they come on very late. And he he said, you know, sometimes managers, it's very easy for managers to just put their trust in the experienced players. And of course, that's what Gareth has been doing. But Ange is very good at it made giving me think the young players a go. Archie Gray, Bergval, straight away, I thought, yeah, they're gonna get. They're going to get minutes a lot. Obviously, he obviously we signed Gray for a lot, he, but like Berg, they're, chucked, they're both going to get minutes. He did it with yeah, Van der Ven absolutely. Van der Ven, Van der Ven, There was no, yeah. oh, you know, we're going to wait five games and I'll play right. him in a League Straight Cup in. game. He was like, yeah. why not? Should we talk to someone about Archie Gray? That's not him. <laughs> well, he can talk, he can comment. He's allowed to comment. He knows his dad, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's his granddad. Uh, granddad. Well, because he met him once at Millwall Leeds. <laughs> Had a tear up in the car park with Eddie Gray. I reckon Eddie Gray would crush you. I reckon he's just, <laughs> even at 85 or whatever he is. I'll let him have it. <laughs> let him have it. We need to get, we, we need to get Eddie Gray on Hold the on. show. Do you mean, um, yeah. do you mean like let him have the win or you'd let him have it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him have the win. He's from Essex. You never know what might happen. Uh, we're going to talk to a Leeds, Leeds fan, I don't know. Northern, Northern journalist, Yorkshireman. You did your research then? Yeah. Adam Pope. Uh, let's talk to him right now. Delighted to be joined by Adam Pope, commentator for BBC Radio Leeds. Adam, thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure. So, one uh, transfer for Spurs so far this season, the signing of uh, Archie Gray from Leeds United. I'm going to go straight in. Just let us know what we're getting. What kind of a player is he? Generational talent, that's what you've got. I mean, honestly, I've seen some players through Leeds. You know, Delph, um, Housen, uh, Lewis Cook. But this guy beats them all. I think he is extraordinary. He was on the bench under Bielsa at 15. Took all in his stride. Didn't get his debut under him. But just made, for a midfielder, ended up making that right-back area his own last year and Mm. saw them all off, you know. Even when Connor Roberts came in on loan, couldn't get past him. Luke Ailey ended up going out on loan to to Middlesbrough. And he, he he really stuck to the task brilliantly. And... He's, he's probably so talented that he can adapt because there's some things you can't coach. And uh, his his, aware, his football awareness, his appreciation of space, time, opposition, how to deal with difficult situations, superb. Uh, honestly, I think you've got England player in the making right there, which is great considering some of his Scottish background. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, what is his best position? Because I actually I've seen a lot of him mainly at right back. But I didn't really realise, I think he wants to be and probably is a defensive midfielder. Yeah, but I've seen him also play a bit more attacking mid as well for the under-21s. So I right. saw so, so him score an absolutely fantastic goal um, playing for the 21s. In that, so he's got that in his locker as well. He, he had his big moment as a goal scorer taken off of course against Leicester last year where a double deflection saw that shot go into the of course, net yeah, yeah. Uh, the row. But it was his moment. So he's not actually scored for Leeds, which is a bit sad. But uh, um, but he does have that in his locker as well. So I wouldn't pin him down as particularly someone that's just in front of the back four or as a number 10, if you like. Um, but midfield is his position and that's where he wants to be. And I do think with his range of skills, that's where you'd see him. Because I'm looking, I saw Spurs at the back end of last season at Shepherd United. I know it was not exactly a dead rubber, but certainly it was for Shepherd United. But your defence is decent. I, I've got high hopes for Spurs this season. I think that's going to be a hard defence to get into. But... Mm. So I'd probably see him as a midfielder, to be quite honest. Also, he something that you would obviously agree with, he's worn the kind of tag of the name that he's got on his back as well. Something that the pressure that has come with that, he seems to have not bothered him at all. No, n- not at all. I mean, he, he, as I said, he took the the whole being with the first team squad at 15 under his you know, on his shoulders pretty well. But I think also because, yes, he's got the great lineage. So he's got, obviously, Eddie is his great sort of um, uncle. He's got, obviously, his his grandfather, Frankie, his dad, Andy. Uh, and don't forget, he's got younger brothers with the name who are, who are very, very good as well, cool. pushing him all the way too. So he's been around these, you know, really seasoned pros who played at the top level for ages. So he knows how to conduct himself. He just isn't phased at all. And he's a really nice, really nice kid as well. He's a lovely, lovely bloke. So really rounded, you know, like, you know, he's done good with his studies as well, but just applied himself fantastically. And, and he had he had a little, the other thing as well, he's already coped with a little bit of a hiccup in his career. He had a, 
it was more like a growing issue with, I think it was with his ankle. So he was out of the game for a little bit, just as he was getting near to um, maybe making his debut a few years ago. So it just sort of ruled him out for a little while. So he's, he's coped with a little bit of that too, but also coped in a very pressurised season last year mm. and being one of the standout performers. And never mind having the great name around him. He's coped with the pressure of the lead shirt, which is very, very heavy. How have the fans taken to it? Is it a realisation now that unfortunately these things are going to happen? Are there fans that thought, couldn't we have given him another season to get us back into the Premier or have they just accepted that just kind of that was it, the money came in and he had to go? It, it's it's not gone down well, to be honest, because Leeds have now got Red Bull as, as part of their, um, their ownership package, if you like, at Leeds United. And with the money that's come in, and I believe it's a really big deal that's come in for um, you know the shirt sponsorship, etc. Then you're thinking that maybe that money could have facilitated keeping a grey um, Somerville or a Nonto down the line. Unfortunately, that's not happened. I, I don't think it was all forced on them by PNS. I don't think so. I think they were going to fall on the right side. But I think what it has done, getting 40 million for a player who's let, let's be honest, relatively untried yeah. at, at, at a high level. Um, is a good deal. I think the sell-on is there for Spurs as well. I'm quite sure that's that's you know if he does well for you, then if you want it to sell, it, you're going to you're going to make money too. But it's just too good to turn. When you think Rafinha and and Phillips went for similar amounts of money mm. and they're sort of season pros, it is a good deal and it keeps Leeds in a strong position to try and buy for this pre-championship season, if you like. So there was an air of inevitability. I think we saw at Wembley. He looked around. He thought, you know what. This is it. He's gone. So, yeah. And it was in his deal. It was in his contract. You know, if a club came in, that, you know, he could go. So it does work both ways. Yeah. You said Leeds fans were obviously unhappy about losing Gray, but seemingly pretty happy to get Joe Roden back. You know, he's, he's struggled at Spurs. He didn't really get a chance under the likes of Conte and Mourinho, but he looks to have found the home at Leeds. You know, I saw his interview, he said he's pretty happy to be back home and he seemingly turned down a few Premier League clubs in favour of Leeds as well. That must have gone down quite well. Jay, I'm I'm delighted to be honest. I thought he, for me, he was probably my player of the season. Him and and Ampadu were really good. Ampadu going back into the the defence to play alongside him. We really noticed with Rodan. He picked up a bit of a mad red card at Hull. Yeah. Um, with two yellows, and then he he was able to come back for this Southampton game, which was at the start of a really long run where they won all those games, and he. He wasn't picked for it when he could have been, and we really missed him. They really, really missed him, and he's just been such a stalwart. His pace is fantastic. I am surprised that he hasn't gone to like maybe a middling Premier League yeah. club, you know, or or somewhere like say an Everton or something like that. If they were to happen to sell Brantwell, so I, I just think he's a Premier League player. So absolutely delight. And for ten million, I think that's that's decent mm. business. So no, a massive, massive upside uh, that is. Um, in what was a difficult week without Chigray and Red Bull and a few other people going as well. I just want to quickly ask you about Jed Spence. Obviously, he spent time on loan at Leeds last season. I know he, he played a bit and had a bit of an injury and then there was some talk of Farker sending him back because he had attitude problems. He's obviously been at Spurs for two years now. There was massive high hopes after he got Forrest promoted, but he obviously never got the chance under Conte. Um, he, he's obviously a Spurs player, but what did you sort of make? What was the, you know, the general consensus when he was at Leeds for that period of time? We'd seen his, his great displays at Forest. However, I, you know, we had heard that there'd been a bit of an issue with him at Middlesbrough as well. Yeah. Talent-wise, I mean, way above the level for the championship. We thought, great, this guy's coming in, gets injured straight away, literally within his first first appearance. Might be an arrived with a little bit of a, a, an issue. And then there was just things about him that you, you hear stuff behind the scenes and the attitude stuff was you heard could be a bit of an issue too. And I just feel maybe that in the end was, if you're not willing to not just toe the line, but, you know, be the team player. I thought it was just mad things when you watched him in the warm, he'd, he'd do his own thing. Yeah. You know, it was like he wasn't, he wasn't like on the same page as everybody else. So um heard a few things behind the scenes as well that sort of fitted in with that too. So it's a shame because you just feel it's just going to drift into nothingness if he's not careful because that, he is so, so talented. Well, there was um, that thing with Neil Warnock, way. wasn't there? Neil Warnock had, had made some comments about him and then when he got promoted with Forrest, he put that photo of himself in the changing room yeah, smoking yeah, a cigar. As... Yeah. yeah. And, and I thought he could be that player that could maybe really kick them on because he put them on the left-hand side as well to begin with, yeah. as I recall, um, once he did get back fit. And it, it just it didn't really work out. Great at attacking. Oh, my, he did not want to do the recovery yeah. run. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I think it was it was a shame, and it's probably one of the few signings that they've got a bit wrong. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I just think it shows Spence and Gray may not be maybe not be too dissimilar in. Uh, ability but attitude makes such a big difference especially at a young age and like you said it seems that like Archie's got his head very much screwed on you've got the right player honestly he would he would like bring the cones out and stuff and, and help out in, in training and just have that really good let, let's knows he's the young kid mm. he would do everything you know to sort of fit in without without having to be you know kissing backsides you know what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he just straight away fell into the senior team sort of environment very, very quickly, but knew his place, did, did his stuff, helped out and just let his talent do the talking. And it, honestly, he's prodigious. You, you've got such a, a good player there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to see where you're going to play him. Yeah, But it will not phase him. Look, look what he did at Chelsea. I know Leeds lost the game yeah, in the cup yeah, time. Superb, years, but he was the star of the show yeah, that day. I mean, he, he, he took the rip out of them that day, to yeah. be fair. Uh, Adam, listen, really great to talk to you. The words generational talent uh, has excited uh, me and I know that will excite everyone listening. Um, really good to talk to you. Hopefully we can talk to you again soon with Leeds, maybe back in the Premier League uh, this season, in, in another season or two. Uh, really great to talk to you and thanks for joining us. Anytime, guys. Loved it. Uh, it's, it's a good signing. You, you said off-air, best... We've signed the best player in the championship before. Well, no, 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 as in there was a lot of, well, why haven't we, you know, why didn't we sign Eze or why didn't we sign Elisa? And we've missed out on loads of EFL mm. players, but we've probably signed the most successful EFL player ever in Deli Alley. Mm. You know, what he did in the Premier League, double young player of the year, you know, scoring, the, you know, a World Cup, was it quarter final against Sweden? Yeah. No one has done that well, but we've, we've been, I feel like we've been stung a bit from... Roden, who obviously went to and Spence as well, who also went to Leeds, which is why we've maybe been slightly hesitant with maybe someone like Walton. Mm. But I've been calling for ages. We have to dip into the championship market because there are so many potentially top players there, and I'm delighted we've done it with good players, Ray. isn't he? Really He's brilliant. Good player. I won't name He's him, brilliant. but there was a guy on Twitter who said, "Why didn't we sign Walton, Eze, Scott, Elise, and Robertson from Hull? Why are we signing Archie Gray?" What's wrong with people? What is? I mean, if we for the record, if we sign Andy, Andy Robertson. Robertson after we just beat Hull seven one in two thousand seventeen, after Hull had just been relegated, when we had Danny Rose as our people would have gone. Can you imagine the uproar? Point, and yeah. I would argue that actually Archie Gray is a much bigger name based on what he's done in the Championship than any of those lot were. There's been a lot when of they noise were about signed. Gray. There has been a lot of noise. Okay, partly from I, I imagine because it's Leeds and Leeds are in the news a lot. They've been quite a good side. Obviously, his granddad, but he's also, he's delivered on the pitch. Yeah, Like, yeah. Adam Wharton, nobody knew about him, but I think the, he's the, turned out to be a good player, but people weren't, it wasn't on the, he wasn't on the, everyone's radar. It wasn't on the lips of everyone. Oh, we've got to sign him. We've got to sign him. Everyone's been wanting Archie Gray, I think, for quite a while. And what a bit of business. We, we, we paid 30 million for him. Is that right? Up front? 25. Maybe 25. 25. And Roden. And Roden, but we've got 10 for Roden. Well, no, I think that's included. That's no, no, it was. I, 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 well, you tell me. I read it was. Uh, it was Roden plus um, ten million, and we paid twenty five for. So we've effectively signed him. I think what that was to help them out with the uh, oh, yeah, FFP, no. but it's done us an absolute treat. He's a top player. I wasn't. I actually didn't know he was a defensive midfielder primarily. Who's fitting he in it right, right back. back nearly the whole season? Actually, bit of I a think what spoke midfielder. volumes to me is I don't know if you saw this, but but Leeds' statement. They actually said in there their statement, we are heartbroken. Mm, they, yeah. they had a massive, yeah, like, player. heartfelt statement, which I know he's one of their own and he's, you know, one of the biggest talents they've had for quite a few years, but it just made me think, bloody hell, we've potentially got a serious player on our hands there. Mm. Quickly, before we finish this pre-season episode. Yes, we're not going to win the league. <laughs> what do we need? What do we need? We've talked about this ad nauseum at the end of last season, but well, we haven't sold, really sold anyone. No, but we just, as we just said, we've signed... I mean, where's he going to play, do we think, Archie Gray? I think he'll play a bit everywhere. Yeah, he... back up We've right obviously back got Ber Bergval, yeah. although has he gone back on loan? No, 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 we've no, got no, him. no, we'll be keeping By him. Bival, please. Bival. I feel, like, I, feel like he's, I feel like he'll take a little while longer to get in the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think, well, it looks like Richarlison's going to go. Do you think? I keep thinking he might stay. He's I back think, already, isn't he? Yeah. I think, I, think if, I, I think when Saudi come calling, I think the club's selling, get itch, itchy, itchy, what's I the think word? If itchy they, feet. I think if they can get... 50, 60 million yeah. and recoup 
you know, and, and, and I've always been a Richarlison fan, but yeah, he's got me 12 too. goals in two seasons. When, when the Saudi clubs come calling, it's very difficult for both the selling club and the player to mm. turn it down. Uh, what's and, the and, player and if you're, want it? Does the well, player want it at we, 27? Will that affect I was going to say, if you're, if you're Richarlison... No, I don't think so. Does, does another... Is he going to get a is he going to get a move up in the Premier League from us? No. no, I reckon a European club, a team in the Champions League. Yeah, but he's not going to get that kind of money. And there's enough other Brazilians now play like it. It's I just I, I don't know. Maybe if he uh, goes, there's not. I love hun- Tony, but who knows what's going to happen with him? Him and as I watched him for Mexico, donkey mate. Sorry. <laughs> Don't sign out the Dutch League. I thought he was terrible well, in the Copa America. We Whenever we ever sign badly out of the Dutch League. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned him already. Uh, obviously, Elise's gone. Eze's still there. Yeah. You take I Eze. Love him. You wouldn't take Eze? I always feel bad for Palace. I feel like, okay, <laughs> everyone just leave Palace alone. Now. I would love yeah, I mean, yeah, between yeah. Eze, Tony, you, if we could get one of those through the door. Great. It doesn't matter who else we sign. That is a good summer, I think. Mm. Plus Gray, plus Bival. I still think we need a left back. Another left back. Do you know what, talking to left backs, you know what I always find right weird? Back. You know when the players come back for pre-season and you see like Regulon and you're like... I forgot about him. I forgot he played for us. And yeah. You always get those like players that come back like Troy Parra and all these guys <laughs> are like, yeah. didn't you leave us about three years ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like that, you know, that when you first day back at school and you're like, oh, I haven't what? seen you for a while. <laughs> thought you'd left. But I, I read this morning that apparently... Um, Emerson could be on his way. Oh, that's, yeah, a, tr- I, that's that, a saga, isn't it? That, that's going to yeah. happen. Surely that's going to so happen. We, so we, so we so really long? need that. We also need a right back then. Because what? Well, Gray can play there. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got one. <laughs> can he and Hoybier, obviously, yeah. now the Euros are over for them. You, you, He'll be on the uh, move. Imagine that that will get done. Lacelso as well. Mm. But is Gray enough to cover... I mean, how many positions is the guy going to cover when you've got injuries and Europa League? We still feels we could do with one... I mean, the the absolute golden ticket is someone that can play right back and left back, but they don't grow on trees. So, Lee Young Pyo. Lee Young Pyo. <laughs> Pyo Young Lee. Yeah. Um, Kyle right. Walker. Kyle Walker Peters can play both sides. Oh no, no, no! I'm not gonna, no, I will not entertain. That I don't really. like him, but he's there's not the, good there's enough a on the ball for to play in that. Back. Yeah, but in that, no. but to play uh, in that way. I agree. I don't want him. You need he's, to. He's you need good to enough be... for a Premier League mid-table Premier League club, but from where we're going, he's, he's, no, he's I, not I what think, we need. I think he'd be good enough to play as a, as what you call Maybe a traditional was... right back. But I just don't. As think... a squad you, player at you, best, at, but to play under Ange, you've got, basically got to be as good as a central midfielder on the ball playing at right back. Yeah. Otherwise, you're you're cooked. All right. Any other business? We've done what we've done this summer: the Euros, the Cup America, a little bit of transfer chat. There's not much transfer chat. It's, it's going to grow, isn't it, it over is. the next few weeks? Pre-season. Right. When's our first game? I don't know. Is it, heart, is it Hearts we've got? I don't yeah. know. Is that the first one? I know it's Hearts away. Isn't I think it? it's next. I think it's next week. Wow! Really? Potentially. I think it might be. Should like have known all this. Really. Next Wednesday, Thursday. <sighs> Were you, are you not going Hearts away, Johnny? I'm. I, I, yeah, I'm not going to go. <laughs> We're probably on some another tour, aren't we? Oh, one interesting thing, actually. Yeah, we go to Tokyo so in the July. The, all the players return back, right? Mm. Apart from the players that made tournaments, apart from one, which is Son, right? And I saw someone suggesting that he's not going to come back because we're going to go out to Korea in three weeks. But surely that can't be the case, can it? Uh, oh, I see what he's going to meet us there. But, but for three weeks' time, oh, that be seems very mad because we've got loads of games before then, haven't we? Uh, well, we go to this, we play in Tokyo and then we play in uh, in Korea. He did play quite a bit for Korea over the summer, so maybe they're giving him an extra extended break because Korea... Somehow seems to have about 400 games every international break. <laughs> we play Hearts on the 17th of July. Then we play uh, QPR on the 20th of July and then we disappear off into the... Into so maybe Asia. we'll come back and play them. Tonight. All right. Our pre-season's over. <laughs> like I said, we've got we've got a couple of season look-backs uh, to, to close off July. Like if something happens, we'll pop back into the wonderful right. Launchport Studios. Um, everyone keep a look out for Jake Sanderson's breaking team news. If you want to take a look back at Jake Robson by the ballot box from, <laughs> from sorry, Fairham. 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 Uh, do that. What are you going to say about yourself? Me? Yeah. Uh, He's really busy. I'm really He's busy. He's really busy. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little bit of work on the Olympics. And then I'm going to go on holiday. Is there any sports you can't cover? Tennis, don't like tennis. <laughs> Boring, isn't it? Um, all right, gentlemen, thank you. He doesn't like any sport apart from football. He's rubbish. Love, yeah, football rugby. Cricket. No, no, thanks. I hate rugby. Tennis. No thanks. Yeah. NFL. No, no thanks. thanks. Like a bit F1. of F one. Silly. It's a driving round and he round. He doesn't like any sport. It's football or football or cricket. Proper sports. Mate. Proper sport. Gentlemen, thank you.
Thank done, you. We've done what we can with that little bit of pre-season stuff. Um, and we'll be back soon. But like I said, do listen out for the uh, season look backs. Go back. They're timeless. They're on our, on our YouTube, on our Spotify. Look out for a couple more. Gentlemen, thank you. See you soon. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. And up the Spurs.